technology likely to have the greatest impact in the next few decades has arrived. And it's not social media, it's not big data, it's not robotics, it's not even AI. It's called the blockchain. Blockchain. And then also Charles Robinson, would you please step up? He's a speaker, he's an executive coach, he's a cryptocurrency manager, and uh, he's a certified blockchain expert. Thank you. Okay. And uh, he's also an author, and I met him at a Forbes event uh, last Hi. month here, so when I found out that we were having this event, I, I invited him to come and participate. So we have an expert in cryptocurrency. I'd like to know what's your definition of blockchain technology. Yeah, so it means that... Uh, that we don't necessarily, we, not that we don't have to trust, but the trust is built in into the system because of the mathematics, because of the cryptography. And so we, we look at a blockchain, I would say it's decentralized, distributed, so you don't have a central bank that is controlling everything. Basically, it allows you to be your own bank. And anyone with a cell phone and uh, internet connection and email address can receive and send digital currencies, uh, so you look at the unbanked, there's three billion people in the world that are unbanked. Now we can bring them online into a banking system uh, with the blockchain technology. What do you see, besides Bitcoin, that we can talk about with trust and accountability, transparency at their core, what kind of applications do you see? So let me give you an example. So there's a company called Grid Plus, and I go to blockchain conferences. There was one in uh, San Francisco recently called Ethereal. Also, there was an LA blockchain uh, conference called BlockCon. And so you get to hear about some of these applications. They're exciting. So Grid Plus can basically allow you to manage your own uh, electricity consumption and usage. You can you can draw down power from the grid, and you can connect it to your uh, to your uh, hybrid car. And so your hybrid car is charging up the batteries during the day, and you can actually upload that electricity to, uh, to the grid. So that would be one example. Uh, I would say another one would be like distributed voting systems uh, that, are, that are neutral and uh, that, are, that are accurate and factual and verifiable. So that would be another example of, of a blockchain application. So Bitcoin, uh, the blockchain itself is, is transparent. What that means is a lot of people think it's all encrypted. It's not. Only the sender and receiver digital signatures are encrypted. It's open. And so you look at, you talk about uh, medical information, you have to deal with HIPAA issues. And so there are other uh, completely encrypted blockchains, like Monero is one of them, and the Zcash is another. So you want to look at uh, security versus, in the public public blockchain versus private. You know, you, you want to put up a blockchain, but you don't want everyone to be able to see it, put up a private blockchain. Don't put it on the public blockchain of, of Bitcoin or Ethereum. So there's permission and permissionless. Yes, exactly. exactly. So that's what you're saying by public or not. Mm -hmm. or right, and, and Ethereum is coming up with, with wallets that will be able to, um, to, be able to uh, identify you securely, and then once you're identified securely, then you can access all the other apps that you're uh, authorized for. 80% of the blockchain applications, from what I've seen, being a software developer, are not really good blockchain applications. It's kind of like in the 90s, anything that had a .com, oh, we're going to buy it, it's great. You know, this is like now dot .money, anything that has a dot .money, uh, it doesn't mean it's a good thing. Because blockchain, as Ben said, is inherently very slow. We're only able to basically, basically get about six transactions a second confirmed, which is like child's play compared. That's why we have Bitcoin Cash. There's some pretty significant players working that Yes, problem. like Ethereum's working on Plasma, Bitcoin Cash. Cash, EOS, and NEO as well. There's other ones that have smart contracts. The new thing is called the TGE, Token Generation Event, because ICOs have gotten kind of a bad rap. And uh, we don't want to say that there's equity. It's a bad name. It's right. Bad. So you don't want to necessarily say that it's equity in a company because that implies the security, then the SEC gets involved. So you want to say it's really a percentage of, of profits, more or less. And a lot of companies have been doing ICOs, raising money, and they don't even, they're not even, not even a company. They're just an idea. They're just a project. But yet they're raising, for example, Tezos raised $250 million, and that was six months ago, and the tokens aren't even going to be allowed to be traded until January. So, uh, you know, we've got to be kind of careful with that. Don't throw your money necessarily in ICOs. I'm doing an ICO right now, so I'm actually doing it on the Ethereum blockchain. Chain. So we're, we're hearing two sides. We're hearing this is a really, really good thing, but then we're also hearing wait. So 
this is a good discussion to kind of balance it out. Uh, right here. Yeah, I was wondering if anyone has the opinion that, um, or the concern that speculative trading and certain things like Bitcoin could give it, could take it with a bad name and make it harder for, for bona fide applications. Right. Yeah, this is my area. We are in a bubble, by the way. It's a bubble. We recognize it's a bubble. Uh, you know, fourteen thousand dollars right now. Been up two thousand dollars Bitcoin in, in in one day. So, this is giving a bad name. Also, the also the crime aspect of them using Bitcoin. A lot of that is going from Bitcoin now to Monero, because it's fully encrypted. So, yeah, but it's like cash. It can be used for evil or for good, right? It can fund an orphanage or it can be used for cocaine. Actually, if you look, if you look at this, 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 the uh, technical chart of Bitcoin, it looks identical to Amazon stock in the 90s. So where does that tell you it's going? And, and, and in the case of Bitcoin, there's sort of maybe the perception, at least, of a loss of control over that. Well, the consensus, that's why bankers, okay, so the banks are terrified of Bitcoin. They're, they're going to try to stop it. And, and, and we've got the NASDAQ going to do futures now. And so a lot of people said that's good, but there is a negative aspect of that because you can control $100 with a Bitcoin with $1 in the futures market. And so if they want to kill it, that's the way to do it because the banks cannot make money off of this. This is decentralizing, decoupling the banking system to you and to me. We become our own bank, and they don't have the control anymore. But in classic, all right, so I don't know if classical economics will even apply to this, right? But in classical economics, you, if you have an unlimited supply, potentially, right? Okay. There's not unlimited. It's only 20, 21 million. Yeah. Uh, the central bank can cap the supply of money, but there's no one out there that's going to cap the supply of these. Okay. Only the original, de I mean, like only the developers can cap whatever coin they want. They have an initial minting that they'll say, and they'll never go beyond that. So that creates what we need to have, so which is scarcity. There has to be trust in that particular Yes. It's not technically. It's not technically re-verified. It's not recomputed. Well, the entire chain exists on every node in the network. That is the decentralized aspect of it. Sure. The prior block. Every, every yeah. Calls for the chain. It's, my understanding. it's not the entire chain. It's just the, the, the current block is uh, is processed. What they say is we want this thing called the nonce, N O N C E, which is like a prime number with you know 40 zeros at the beginning of it. And by the way, Bitcoin mining is becoming more expensive every day. And so someone had said by 2022, it's going to consume all of the power that India uses, for example. Technology platform. So if it's hacked, now you, your vulnerability is increased. Well. We've made it everyone's problem, right? <laughs> So it, it would have to be hacked on every computer, every node that runs it. So if someone asked me, okay, it's 14,000, what would stop this from going up? I said two things, a technological problem of some sort, like you're saying, if it was a, if it was a bug or a virus inside the code that everyone's running, number one, or number two, uh, undue regulation comes down from the government, you'd see a massive sell-off. By the way, even if the United States were to ban Bitcoin, it would still go strong in the world. Japan, you know, uh, other countries, you know, Netherlands. One quick close here. Okay, so one thing we didn't talk about are smart contracts. Smart contracts are like Bitcoin Plus. Smart contracts are going to change the world. Why? Because you think about legal language in a contract being programmatized into a program where the programmers now 
they just don't have uh, power over the code, they have power over the money. So a life insurance policy that you take out lives on the blockchain, it's dormant for 40 years, it gets notified that you passed, immediately the money transfers. There's not letting it hold up on the wires or anything like that, or people saying, well, I can test this will, because everyone has agreed to the terms of the contract and digitally signed them at the beginning, the money transfers immediately. So it's going to eliminate a lot of litigation. So I want you to get that tonight, too, because smart contracts will change the world. Thanks, Charles. Thanks, sure. Ben. I really appreciate everybody coming here. That's